Hey there guys, I know that many of you are very, very skilled HPS growers who have been using them for years to deliver really high quality harvests uh, with good yields from your grow setup. But I'd like to show you five reasons why you might consider changing. And these reasons are not based on my opinion, they're based on scientific research and evidence-based uh, material that I'm gonna provide for you over the course of the next few minutes. So stay tuned and uh, I'll show you the details of why LED are really now far superior from HPS and it's really worthwhile switching over. So the first question really is what makes a good grow light? And I'm gonna argue that the best grow light is gonna have the optimum spectrum to deliver the maximum yield of the highest quality crop for the least amount of cost in a safe and reliable way. As I said already, this uh, 1000 watt double-ended HPS is gonna deliver a fantastic yield, the right grower in the right circumstances and environment. But to demonstrate what your options are and what great alternatives you have now, I'm gonna compare this high-end fixture against a 750 watt micro array LED grow light. Both of these lights are suitable for a five foot by five foot or 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter area. And I've tested these fixtures in all of the sort of calculable characteristics that I can. And I'm gonna show you the differences between the two and what the benefits are of one over the other. I'll also be using data from Utah University. That's where Dr. Bruce Bugby has been studying the um, effects of different environment, uh, lighting intensity, spectrum, etc., on uh, cannabis growing for the last seven or eight years and has been publishing those results. So I have all the latest data from them to demonstrate and back up some of the claims I'm making about uh, the benefits of LED over HPS. First consideration for optimum grow light is to assess the spectrum. Now, if you look at McCree's curve, you can see that different uh, wavelengths of light will have different effects on the plant in terms of its characteristics and its growth. So UVA will increase oils and strengthen um, the plant in terms of the cuticles and branches. Blue, very, very critical aspect of the spectrum. A high percentage of blue in the overall spectrum will re uh, result in short and dense growth. A lack of blue or very little blue result in stretching, uh, tall stretched plants, which are not ideal for indoor growing. Green, it's photosynthetically efficient. We know that now. Um, but it also is very useful uh, in mixing with, first of all, because it penetrates the canopy, it's bounced around the canopy and can give higher whole plant photosynthesis. Um, but it also, when added to blue and um, red, results in pure white light, which is much better for inspecting the health of your plants in terms of nutrition deficiencies and uh, possibly you know, infestations or bugs. Red is highly photosynthetically efficient. It doesn't have a, a effect on plant shape, um, but is very desirable because it has the highest photosynthetic efficiency of all the wavelengths. And then red, or far red, is photosynthetically uh, active. We know that it causes photosynthesis, but uh, opposite, as opposed to blue, it can cause stretching. So too much far red in the spectrum, in particular where balanced against the proportion of blue, can cause plants to be um, too tall and stretched. In terms of looking at the different sources of light, so testing a HPS, versus LED versus sunlight. You can see from this comparison here that LED is the closest to sunlight. So neither HPS nor LEDs have any UVA or UVB in them. Uh, the LED has a higher proportion of blue. It's often the weakness with HPS is that it has a low percentage, around 5%, which can cause stretching, um, particularly as it has a fairly high percentage of far red as well. Although it's noticeable that HPS far red, a lot of it is up around 760 nanometers, um, where it is uh, not photosynthetic anymore and is really only um, radiated heat. In terms of other aspects, you want as high a proportion of red as possible, which um, again, LED is close to HPS, but HPS has a little advantage there in being slightly photosynthetically more efficient because it's higher proportion of red. And here you can see studies from the Crop uh, Physiology Laboratory in Utah State University demonstrating that at 5% blue, 
you get a considerable amount of stretching versus 20% blue where it will be uh, much reduced. In terms of that red portion, as I said, it's desirable to have as high a proportion of red in the spectrum output as possible for photosynthetic efficiency. However, that's theory and in reality, when tested by Crop Physiology Laboratory U test in Utah State University, they found when the same power intensity was applied to controlled um, tests that the yield resulting from a, a HPS spectrum with only about 4% blue up to a 5k or cool white spectrum with about 20% blue from LED. The yield results were uh, the same when the, um, when the sort of percentage error was uh, included. As you can see from the grow room images, HPS can be, can be very yellow and uh, does not have enough blue in it to give good color representation. Whilst under LED, you get a far better uh, realistic impression of how your plants are doing in terms of nutrient deficiencies and spotting any disease. Tests from the Crop uh, Physiology Laboratory, Utah State University, uh, demonstrate that far red at a, higher percent, at a high percentage of the overall spectrum will deliver stretched growth. That is, long distances between internodes, that's between branches, and, um, and larger leaves. These qualities or these characteristics aren't really desirable in an indoor setting. So I think the LED spectrum is marginally better than the HPS spectrum. Remember the HPS spectrum has a little higher percentage of red, um, which can be considered to be higher photosynthetically efficient in theory. However, hasn't been proven in practice. The LED, however, has a higher percentage of blue in it. Most white LEDs will and uh, this means it'll deliver shorter and dense growth than HPS, HPS would. And um, this is what we want from our grow light spectrum. So I think LED is a winner in this case. When it comes to power output, you know, power being the radiation that's coming from a grow light that's used by plants for photosynthesis, and it's accounting the number of photons or particles of light coming from a fixture. Um, in the in the power range, which is from 400 to 750 nanometers, or the E power range, extended power range, and I've tested both of these fixtures to see what their total power output is, how much power they consumed, and how well and evenly they distribute that light. You can see here, although the LED fixture at 750 watts is 30 percent less power consumption than the 1,080 watt. Uh, HPS, it's able to deliver a higher par, average par across the plant canopy at 836 micromoles versus the HPS 759 micromoles. And as you can see, also delivers a more even light spread across the canopy. The efficiency of the HPS system is the highest actually I've ever tested. This is a very good fixture at 1.58 micromoles per watt. I did test, test this fixture at multiple hanging heights. Um, as you can see here, I chose the optimum result, which is the one at 2.5 foot or 75 centimeters above the plant canopy. One of the big benefits obviously with LED is a lower heat output, as I'll demonstrate de in, in a deeper level later. And this means that you can push the power intensity in a 5x5 five five far above what you can with the HPS. I think most HPS growers will accept that a 1080 watt HPS in a 5 foot by 5 foot or 1.5 by 1.5 meter area is, is quite a lot. It's quite difficult to deal with the amount of heat coming from it. And that delivers just under an average of about 800 micromoles. New studies are showing, again from Utah State Laboratory, that you can push that average power up to at least 1200 micromoles. That's without any um, additional raised CO2 or, or running a closed system and still get a significant or proportionate increase in yield. And in short, with LEDs, you can push the average power intensity 50% higher than you can with HPS in your 5x5 five five and, and deliver close to 50% more yield. So big benefit there. You can drive your performance, the performance of your grow much harder with LEDs. 
Another significant benefit to running LEDs over HPS in your indoor scenario is hanging height and the height below your fixture. So LEDs can be hung right up to the top of your tent. Uh, they need very little head height above them, uh, just enough to allow a little bit of airflow. Much more importantly, they can be hung much closer to the canopy, uh, down to about 10 inches at a minimum, uh, or 25 centimeters. Whereas with the um, HID setup, with HPS, particularly with a big thousand watt like this, you're gonna need about two and a half feet um, or about 70 to 90 centimeters to get adequate height for even spread to not burn your plants. This allows you to grow a lot taller with LEDs than HPS in the same space. Then we have what I think is the strongest argument for changing over from HPS to LED, and that is cost. A lot of growers argue that LEDs are too expensive, uh, HPS are very cheap. Well, that is the case, uh, relatively speaking, uh, in upfront terms. It's a lot cheaper to buy this HPS unit than it is the LED. HPS is about $200, uh, LED about $650. However, you take running costs into account, it's really expensive to run HPS. And I've got a chart here, which is based on uh, running at 800 micromoles in a five foot by five foot or 1.5 by 1.5 meter space at US electricity costs of average of 16.8 cents per kilowatt hour. And it shows that even with the higher initial fixture cost of the LED, within a year and a half, uh, you are breaking even on that extra upfront expense and then saving $313 per year. So in three years, you have a saving of $488 uh, if switching over. And then for every year after that, a saving of $313. And that does not include change of bulb costs and the additional costs to perhaps um, air condition that extra heat from the HPS. And you look at it from a European perspective where uh, electricity costs are a lot higher, at about 29 cents per kilowatt hour. The uh, payback is much quicker, less than a year, only about nine months. Uh, overall, over three years, you make a saving of nearly 1,200 euros, and then a, a, a saving every year after the initial purchase of 540 euros per year on electricity costs for that, uh, for that LED over the HPS, so very substantial. Before making this video, I asked in some social media posts what were the biggest reasons that growers don't switch over from HPS to LED? It's heat. And it's, it's a bit perverse really that uh, the, what others see as a big inefficiency and downside of HPS, other growers are seeing as beneficial or even necessary for their grow room. Just looking at the output of the HPS versus the LED in terms of heat, first of all, you can see that the LED bulbs run a lot hotter uh, they're uh, maxing out on our um, infrared thermometer here at 330 degrees centigrade, uh, but will get much higher. The temperature of the LED surface temperature being only 25 degrees centigrade, so much lower, um, easy to touch, and not damaging to the plants. The HPS also outputs a lot more uh, radiant heat in the form of infrared. As you can see from the thermal Im imaging camera, the surface underneath the HPS, and that would be your leaves, your plant canopy, will run very hot um, and be, uh, run, be a lot warmer than the rest of the room even. In terms of heat output, the 1000 watt uh, double-ended HPS outputs about 756 watts or 2500 BTUs per hour. The LED outputs only about 300 watts or 1,023 BTUs per hour. So it's uh, the HPS, uh, like for like in terms of power output, will be outputting about two and a half times as much heat. And what I would say to growers who feel they need that heat for the winter is that if your space is that uninsulated, it's likely that you're gonna be having problems, in, uh, the, the reverse problems or the inverse problem in the summer where it's getting too hot with your HPS. My suggestion would be, if you're needing that heat to keep the temperature up in your grow room, you need to insulate your grow room because you're losing all of that heat. You're evacuating it out with the exhaust and it's obviously escaping from the room through the walls. The, an LED um, outputting 250 watts of heat in a well-insulated grow room will be plenty to keep the grow uh, warm and at a sufficient temperature 
in winter. There may be some times where you need to elevate the temperature in very cold periods, but just use, use a heater for that time. Uh, so it's a short term use of a heater to elevate your temperatures rather than having that heat going in all the time and having to evacuate it all the time and having problems with growing through the summer. Lastly, regarding heat, I think it's a big safety issue potentially with HPS, particularly for smaller growers and smaller tents. The uh, surface temperature of those bulbs will easily light uh, a piece of paper or leaf um, or anything that falls on it or grows up into it. I can demonstrate here, I can put this paper over the LED surface forever, it's not going to go on fire. But within a few seconds on a HPS bulb, uh, it lights up. So a serious safety hazard in my view. So the last point is related to yield quality, that is potency, so percentage cannabinoids and the levels of terpenes and flavonoids in the plant for smell and flavor. A lot of this is determined by genetics, uh, nutrients and environment control. However, high light intensity will deliver higher quality buds so more solid, more firm, larger and frostier buds. And you can drive light intensity higher with LEDs without those problems we, we, we spoke about earlier related to heat. If you're using HPS, which radiates a lot of heat, you'll be heating up the top of the canopy. That's where all the best buds are. And they will be at significantly higher temperature the rest of your grow room. These graphs of studies, again, from the uh, physiology department in Utah State University show that although we want high temperatures from a growth point of view, so higher temperatures result in a higher growth rate and a higher yield, um, higher temperatures will also result in reduced potency uh, and quite dramatically so. So really with HPS, you're getting uh, high temperatures, which is good for yield, but the bud temperatures are higher again. So with LED, you can have a relatively higher room temperature while keeping the bud temperatures at the same, uh, or the bud temperatures low. And that will lead to a much higher quality yield overall. So hopefully I've shown you that you can get much better spectrum from LED. You can push your power intensity higher at a much lower cost in the long run. And um, whilst maintaining a better uh, grow room environment, which can reduce your cost, but also improve yield quality in the end. I hope you enjoyed. Looking forward to your comments. I'm sure there'll be many. And uh, yeah, take care.